Hi. Um, I'm Pixie, this is Tommy. <laughs> In um, case. Um, so today we're gonna talk um, a couple of questions. We both have a sheet, but this yes. is not, we're not reading from it. It's a list of our, our questions. Yeah. We want to be in the right sequence. Um, so, <coughs> I want to ask you about how do you come up with the idea for this solo show, and also where does the title Insensitive Flash come from? Yeah, um, so I, I've started doing my residency here um, at the end of last year, so it's like October through the end of December, and it was really like nice to have like a space that I like invited people. It's like this is what I'm doing, this is my research, and then I had to like like it was some place I can go, um, and then the show was kind of like in talks of like uh, happening, um, and at the time I think I just like was or like did my first solo show in Portland at Blue Sky Gallery. Mm -hmm. Um and that was like the first instance I saw like twenty pictures, twenty pieces of my work in person. Like everything before then was like just like small dead street pieces or like a group of pictures and like group show. Um it was hung on a weird wall. Um and so I really wanted to uh do something a little bit different since I had the space and I had to start thinking about it kind of um, like during the time of my residency and then because um, everything started filling up my, with my schedules because uh, I like, ended up participating in a French festival and then um, this two-person show that was kind of like happening and then everything kind of like happened one after the other. Uh, and so, I was like, I, I kind of had to figure it out really early on and um, and try to do something that was already like, I had, was really self-conscious about like showing up, showing the pictures and then showing it again. It's like, oh no, everyone's seen it. It's like, which is not true. Um, and I think I decided on the title uh, from Claude Coven's, um book. Um, of mon uh, monologues, uh, heroines. It was like published in French in 1925, and there was like a, f uh, quote, uh, if I vibrate in a different vibration other than yours, must you conclude that my flesh is insensitive? And I really love that uh, that quote, and I just like insensitive flesh came from that to kind of uh, highlight that I'm kind of like doing my own thing, um, f which I have been for a while, and do Baxter Street and a lot of the things that came out of it was I felt like was something like I get to sh finally show, like, and the work that I, I've been working on for years that no one really paid attention to, or I felt that no one really um, cared to, like, show or, like, knew what I was really doing exactly. At the time, I was um, uh, in grad school, um, in University of Memphis, and you were in another art school in Memphis called a College of Art. Yeah, the, yeah, the Memphis College of Art. Yeah. Yeah, I was undergrad. I remember. I think um, what happened was that I was really like they were just starting publishing about um, photography in China, and like I was convincing my library to. Like, can, like get, can you get this book? Can you get this book? Because it was like, it was amazing. Um, I really wanted to feel like I was part of something mm. that was not like Eggleston, Christian Ray. Because, you know, every, if you're from Memphis, everyone's associated photography with those two guys, like being from the South. And it was uh, hard to be like a photographer in Memphis because without those references and a lot of like, oh, you must photograph the South. I was like, no, I photograph myself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and um, I think I said something like, I wish there was another Chinese photographer in Memphis. And my friend's like, there's this artist, Pixie, and she's having a show at Adam Shaw. And I'm like, uh, it's like, and I showed up for that. And like, it, I, part of this book that you just published, um, and these pictures are on display. Oh, yeah. And it was like 2008, I think, or uh, 2009. Two, I think 2007. Seven, yeah. 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 Uh, and that was such a weird coincidence. I'm like, what? 
Yeah, I mean, at the time when I was in Memphis, that was my first time. I grew up in China, so that was my first time going to the United States, and I went to Memphis straight. And my impression of Memphis, it was like I'm the only international student in the art department. Um, the only Asian. I mean, there are a few Asian Chinese students in the school, but they, they study like uh, accountant or or you know engineering. You know, it's like those majors. So I was very lonely. So when I first saw you, I was like, wow! <laughs> I cannot believe there's a you know it, it looks like you know that it's very familiar, like an Asian or Chinese. You know, and I was like immediately drawn to you because our race mm -hmm. and our situation in Memphis was it was very rare for me yeah. to find something that looked like me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was the same. It was very like I grew up and no one looked like me in movies or TV and like or because um, you like you're Shanghai yeah. and like uh, even our like subtle differences and like born in the United States, I have like sometimes a weird southern accent sometimes, <laughs> uh, and I speak Cantonese and I speak Mandarin and it's like these like differences, but it was like so refreshing um, to see your work, uh, experimental relationship, and then I'm holding this yellow book here, because uh, I'm going to talk about it so much, like it's, uh, it was like the first time I was like, holy crap, I can be funny, um, I can be honest and just talk about myself without feeling uh, ashamed or like oversharing so much because like you really opened that up so much and like mm -hmm. you also did like these um, landscapes and interiors in Memphis as well and like with such a great eye um, and there was like some early work that was really like uh, I don't think a lot of people know mm -hmm. um, about like uh, imaginary girlfriend that was the one I, um, I was like and yeah, imaginary girlfriend was self portrait project mm -hmm. yeah and then uh, the uh, stills from unseen films uh, yeah. and it was just uh, amazing like we're just opposite schools and the kind of coincidence of, of that I was like I'm gonna check my notes yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking like the experience for me in Memphis it influenced my style of photograph like I'm very drawn to because Memphis is such a beautiful city even though it's kind of run down in a way but it's um, there's so much colors and you know there there's so much like beauty of decay and also the people there are very friendly and you can just photograph people. It kind of just influenced my visual style, I think. Yeah. But for you, I think it's much more deep because even though we look very similar, when I first saw you, I was like, oh, there's another you know, Asian person. But then I think I, later I realized if I see like Asian Americans, even though we look very similar, but I would assume like we have more common, but actually when I really communicate with you guys, I realize you're American. Mm -hmm. Like it's completely different because we grew up with very different experience. Yeah. And you know, I grew up in China, um, and in China, like everybody around me is the same race. So I never thought about like racism or being minority. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I go to Memphis, I feel that because I'm like the only Asian in many situations. But I feel like, um, I mean, people will ask, where do you come from? And I say, I'm from China. I, mean, I feel so comfortable because I, I am not from here, you know. I'm just a, like a guest here for a while. But for you, I think it's a very different experience. Because yeah. you grew up here. That is, that is your hometown the whole time. But you grew up in an environment that everybody else doesn't look like you. Yeah. Yeah. And how does that kind of influence your work, if we can talk about that? Yeah, I've like... <laughs> it's like, um... Yeah, I was like, I was, I still get, I get, I still get asked a, that question, where are you from? And even when I'm in Memphis... I mean, I that, like, that is, you know, when I hear that question, I'm okay with it, but it's very hard for me to imagine when you get to ask in your own hometown. Yeah. It's a, like people just mistake me for like this, um, like I'm not from there, or like, oh, where are you visiting from? It's like California, it's like, or it's like, 
you know, Japan or something, and it's like, uh, no, I grew up down the street. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's like, I try to always, like, put on a really thick accent and then try to, like, shift, uh, um, their perception of me, um, uh, so many times. Um, it, something I wasn't so conscious, uh, growing up, because I was, I knew I was at a place and, like, no one, no one else looked like me. Mm -hmm. I went to an all-black uh, grade school, mm -hmm. and then went to a uh, art like middle school and high school, and there was like a lot more um, freedom to be more individual mm -hmm. um, back then. Um, and then, but it was always like this thing of like being from there, but still being out of place. But I think it allowed me to uh, be back and forth a lot, and then um, having this understanding that people just look at me differently and there's like this DN Arbus quote about intention and effect and it was like uh, there's a comes a point where what uh, what there uh, there comes a point when what you want people to know about you and what you can't help people knowing about you and there's like and that was really hit me so like hard as like as photographer trying to navigate the world um, and then trying to like regurgitate it like in like school they just like here are the people who came before you I don't imitate it but be really good be better or be uh, a, like an imitation of that in some sense mm -hmm. um, and I was like I don't want to because all these people are just mostly white guys and I was like I, I get this but and then you know there was a point where I just hate I, I didn't like Eggleston's work for a really long time, and really? I was like, yeah, I was like... I thought you were good pro with him. I am now. <laughs> I love this work. It was like, there was a click later, and I was like, oh, that's... Yeah, that, okay, I get it now. Um, it took me a while, um, but before, it was like, everyone was like... Um, a few years back, there was a, um, another, a magnum photographer, and he was just... Uh, I was introduced to him, and they were like... Um, oh, where are you from? It's like, uh, you're a photographer, so where are you from? It's like, Memphis. Like, no one can photograph Memphis anymore. Like, Eggleston already did it. Like, your work doesn't mean anything. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, I think your experience kind of, it must be like a great um, inspiration for you, for your own work, because when I see your work, you do a lot of self-portrait, and a lot of time I think the feeling of seeing the photographs, you're kind of like out of the place, mm -hmm. that kind of feeling, it yeah. comes out a lot in the photograph. Yeah. That must be, you think it's from your experience? Definitely. I don't think it, I don't know how much of it is like subconscious or like I'm not actively thinking about it. Um, and this work is definitely a manifestation of like uh, photographing. <laughs> Photographing myself, but it's not really me, mm -hmm. and um, and like uh, an exercise to see myself like how I want to be photographed by making these like props and cutouts and masks, and that mm -hmm. is based out of photographs. Um, and other times, it's like I think the humor that I saw in your work it really influenced me. At the same time, like definitely don't try to copy her. Like at all, <laughs> like, but there was like your work and then Ren Hong's work. Um, uh, I think about um, particularly because of that humor that like I thought was really like so performative uh, from performance, but also like kind of this trait about Chinese photography. So I think it was like influencing me as much um, about my work being out of place, but also about that humor to tie myself with y'all, like with mm -hmm. um, the. Chinese photography, how they look at photography in their relationship to it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. Um, so there are a lot of cutouts and masks in this show, and usually, I like I know a lot of your earlier work. You do a lot of, like self portraits or um, portraits with other people, and sometimes um, you have cutouts of Elvis in a room everywhere. Um, <laughs> So, I was going to just show you oh, yeah. of, like, something I saw in Tommy's early work that I feel like so closely connected to what you're showing here. Um, like this Elvis on a golden bed. Yeah. It's a cutout. And then, um, 
Albert St. Thomas Closet. <laughs> um, and, and I think this one is really interesting. This is actually a real Tommy in the photograph. It's but he looks like a, a just like a mask. Like, it's not intentional at all. Um, so can you talk about what's the relationship between like these early works to this? Cutouts of mask, like how does it evolve into that? Yeah, um, so I, a lot of that work I've made while I was in, in grad school at Yale, and during breaks I would go back home um, or definitely to Memphis to make work because I thought I'd make stronger work in the South. Mm -hmm. And then when I didn't, I was going around, and a lot of times it's like so lonely and isolated to uh, drive around, and there's not a lot of people. Like my classmates are doing their own projects, so I bought an uh, Elvis cardboard cutout. Um, Can so I ask why? Oh, uh, he was my stand-in. So when I had the, I was working with a four by five, and so I would like sit the the cardboard out and then oh, just weight it down and then focus and then take the Elvis out. And you <laughs> go there. Yes. Wow. Um, and there was another photographer, Rager Ressinger, um, who was doing this like cardboard cutouts of like self-portrait work herself. And um, when she would do it, where she just made and handcrafted it and did everything, and it was like really, like I thought about this work then, but I was so afraid. To, like I didn't want to come off as copying. It was like I want to just make everything I can terribly. I did it terribly. It's like I want to make a landscape. I want to make a still life, and it was bad. <laughs> um, but it was, I was holding off on like making things that were referencing to other people because I always felt like every time I make a picture it was like a color photograph just was associated with um, Eggleston immediately. It's like, oh, you're from Memphis. It's so, like nothing felt like it was mine, like it was my picture. Even like the photographs of myself and they're like, oh, it's just the color is so beautiful. It's like so American and Southern and so Eggleston. It's like, what about there's me, mm -hmm. you know, there's, I'm in it, and so eventually I, uh, I did a residency of light work and started making just, I said fuck it, and then made like paper mask and um, started doing the early cutouts then in Syracuse, and then just like took off immediately and started making 3D printed mask at the suggestion of my friend from um, Memphis, and then everything kind of just cul cul culminated. Um, I think after three years, like three, like been working at, on, on this for three years now. And I think that is the second picture I made with the 3D printed mask. Mm -hmm. It was like, I thought that was really important to have. Yeah. And um, in, in some of the photographs, you you have another model, another sitter mm -hmm. in the photograph to be photographed with you or with your the replacement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, in my work, I work with my partner Mara a lot. Yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of very close collaboration. Um, I wonder how how do you work with your sitters? Because I, I notice you, you will photograph yourself with men mm -hmm. or with your mom. Yeah. And we can talk about this. <laughs> Let's talk about men. God, that's like a hip. Let's open that door. Let's just open that door. Um, yeah. Jim, how do you work with those people? Yeah, I'm, I'm finding my moro. I'm trying to find my moro. It's a constant <laughs> casting call for like a, a future moro, and then I'll have like, oh yeah, I have a collaborator. Basically, the collaborator in my head will be holding my tripod. <laughs> that's it. Um, uh, I, I think I started working with other people, like I started out photographing like my friends and that's how I, I came into photography, it was mm -hmm. just documenting um, people and I never did like, sh like straight like or stage photographs, excuse me, and um, I did a, I moved here for like uh, a semester in 2010 and made this, uh, the kissing pictures. Mm -hmm. um, and I had like basically people kiss me and I didn't kiss them back. And yeah, I, I, I did that too. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it took me it, more, it took me like a couple of years for me to ask you because I was like, oh man, she's just so great. Why would she want to be in my pictures? <laughs> just so nervous to ask. Um, and I, I, I 
I like this uh, collaboration with, um, with different people and like meeting new people was just such an awkward thing for me mm -hmm. and I love like to figure out how to photograph that awkwardness and to make it awkward was to uh, have people kiss me on the mouth <laughs> and then I would make the exposure really long so they had to hold it <laughs> and so they like and we had to do it again if they moved too much um, and eventually I like started bringing that into uh, casting um, just strangers and people I, I like I knew like my friends started coming in to put um, back in my pictures again um, and now I have like a regular people that I like go back to and photograph because um, I'm really interested in that weird side performance where I like my first self portrait and my last self portrait won't look anything alike and because of age because of different cameras because of like the way I approach the photograph I'm really interested in like how that is that will look um, and I think thinking about our bodies of work with um, you, with you and Moro, um, this kind of long durational project is like there's something really kind of amazing to see like how uh, our skills change and our approaches and strategy changes now and like how much of it is like like so uh, what is constant and then really I don't know I love like the your book that you that you came out. So I'm just gonna keep plugging it in. Like we're holding each other's books, by the way. So we're very cute right now. Um, and now let's talk about your mom. No. Oh, oh yeah. My mom. I, I've never met your mom in person. So my impression of her is always from your photograph. Yeah. So in your early photo, you actually photograph a lot of your mom. And my impression of her is she, she's always very serious and she does not smile at all. And she has a very strong eyeliner around her eyes. So it's like very um, um, strong presence in the photograph. Yeah, I never realized she, was, she would wear eyeliner until, just, until you just mentioned it. Really? <laughs> yeah. Maybe it was just so natural for you, you never noticed. But that kind of just like very strong impression on me all the your mom is very serious and she might be not happy with you or something. Like, like this one, like... Definitely. But I just, you know, that's my impression of her. But last time I, when you talk, uh, you actually said she, she smiles a lot. So yeah. I was like, wow. She's, she, <laughs> is, she, she is very uh, a very happy person. Okay. Um, wrong impression. Uh, yeah, I, that was like a weird conversation we had. Um, so I started pi uh, making pictures of her. Um, during school, and um, there was one thing I explained. I was like, "Yeah, no one really smiles in art photographs," and she really wanted to uh, participate in my work because she's like, she doesn't understand art because um, she's a she's a, a refugee. She's an immigrant, so you know her her most of her life is very um, contingent on surviving. Um, so my great grandparents like escaped China during like. Uh, Wait, like right before the Japanese occupation, um, and then my family stayed after the fall of Saigon, um, and then my mom was the first person to leave um, to flee the country in '83. So she spent nine months on a boat, um, and um, I think her relationship to art was like really, like di very different from mine. And I wanted to um, start including her to understand myself and not just like this weird extension, like I'm an extension of her and, and she is like kind of this half self-portrait of me as, at the same time. Um, I didn't know what exactly what I was doing when I photographed her and then she made it really important, like this weird ritual where I, every time I'm home she's like, when are you going to come over and make pictures? And I was like, <laughs> that understanding was like such a, a weird, uh, like, oh thank god. It's like, she's kind of like your moral. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, uh, yeah. Wait, how did you approach Moro um, for for these pictures? What was your What was your approach to asking Moro to participate? Well, my approach, like in the beginning, when I first met him, I'm immediately attracted to his look. So I'm really interested in him. Okay, not watching there. Um, then I just walk up to him and say, "Can you model for me, a photographer?" You know, as an excuse to get to know him. <laughs> so my intention was to get close to him. Yeah. So I photographed him. So that was my intention. Yeah. But your mom 
I think it's um, very interesting, and and I want to mention that puzzle you made that it's a mix of your you, yourself and your mom mm -hmm. in the same photograph. Yeah, and it was so hard to figure out which part was like matched perfectly. No, I was like, ah, oh, shit, we look so much alike. I am my mom. <laughs> <laughs> when you said earlier, I was like getting to know somebody photographically. I think that that is like the the thing. Like, um, I think everyone kind of does it when they photograph other people. It's just there's like this weird invisible information about someone. And I think why we also photograph ourselves. I don't know if you agree with this statement here, but it's like there's something weird about like the camera how it sees us differently than we see ourselves in the mirror. And I'm trying to like figure that out, like what kind of information I can like. Uh, take from it, mm -hmm. uh, but it's definitely like that that collaboration with someone that for a while, like I guess my mom and Mara, being really constant. They're very. Uh, it's just really getting to know them. It's always like this new thing, and yeah. now they're like willing and like um, they make it really special uh, mm -hmm. when we do it. Like there's this understanding, and they don't understand what we want, like we're thinking, but there's like this that they somehow. Comprehend that it's important some, yeah, somehow. Yeah, and it contribute to um, during this process of photographing somebody constantly. It also develops some kind of relationship through the photographs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what? What was your, like? You, you also photograph your family um, mm -hmm. um, from time. I think you photograph your dad for and your um, aunts. Mm -hmm. so that's I photographed my. My mom and dad occasionally. 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 Yeah. Not that often. I, I don't feel like um, I, don't know, I don't I don't feel that I don't know, but maybe because my relationship with them was um, kinda of different that I don't feel like I want to photograph them often because they're already in my life that much. <laughs> yeah. I mean that's what I felt with my mom. I think the um, the, the kind of angry look um, early on is very true. She's it's very, true. it's very, she was very annoyed at the beginning, it's like, oh, why? I don't even look great. I think that's why she added the eyeliner. Oh, oh no. <laughs> She's like, she'll go disappear, change, and then it's like, all right, here, this is the most colorful wardrobe, because she's like always wearing black or this weird worded shirt, and so I would just like, can you wear something? Like, so that's not like your intention to make her look like, that's her choice actually in the beginning. Yeah. Like her real response to you. Yeah, and I think they exchange like, and she smiles. I just give her that picture and like for her to use, and then show her friends a lot. So, cause like they have like like her like, it's like different currency, different money to them. Like for photography is just more sentimental, and she's like, is all your work, is all your pictures just really sad people? Is no one smiling? No. <laughs> Did, did she see all your photographs? She saw it once, like a long time ago. And in then, your show? Mm -mm, I just I made a book in undergrad, and then she like looked at it, like kind of like this, like okay. <laughs> <laughs> Turns the TV on. I was like, thanks. It's like, um, but it's weird too, because a few years ago she gave me um, um, this uh, a, f a, f a photo album. And of her pictures that she made, and mm -hmm. I, you saw it last week. Um, yeah. And it's just all these pictures of some self portraits of her, and these like pictures, really snapshot, happy pictures of her um, in 1984 after she fled Vietnam and was living in Canada for uh, a while. And it was just like, what? <laughs> I was like, I don't understand you. Where was this this whole time? And like, she didn't. She never explained it to me. She just gave it to me and walked away. So, it's like, so now I'm like, what do I do with this? <laughs> and uh, just to mention, Tommy also have a, a sh two person show close by, and the photograph is about um, your mom, yeah. and in you you also include some of her own photographs yeah. in the show. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's um, very closely linked to this exhibition as well. Yeah, I don't know, like, it's it's weird, like, uh, a lot of, like, my different bodies of work, I also photograph Elvis impersonators and um, um, other things I can't think of right now because I didn't write them down. And uh, I was just, like, if I'm trying to negotiate if it's all, like, one body of work, honestly, or it's just this weird, like, different projects that's, like, 
but I feel like it's all from the same thing, and right now I'm like, is it really the same thing? Can it just be one body of work, one whole long book, all this stuff? I don't know. Um, um, I actually don't know like exactly how you separate your projects. Every time I I see your project name, it's called a different name. So I'm not like I have very, a lot of people email me. Yeah, it? I'm not. I mean, I can tell like difference in the kissing photos, but others, I think they're for me, they're all very closely connected, and I don't know how you separate them if you do separate them in different projects. Yeah, I think I do, but in the long run, I just think they're really the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason, actually, the sidebar is uh, why I changed those titles uh, for the projects is because I get um, emails and then um, called out on Twitter for using their not trademark name or copyrighted titles at all and say it's like I don't like that you're using the same thing. Like it's like, well you don't own it. It's like and they're white white guys um telling me this. You make self portraits and you make these like performance type photographs. And, and, the, and the title I think it's not something that yeah people usually use. I didn't think so either. I was just like I mean, this is really a bookmark for me. It's like this is what I'm thinking right now. Yeah. Um, what if you call it I am Tommy and some Tommy would jump out and say, I am Tommy! <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about that. That's just like even hiring somebody to be me tonight. It's like, who knows? I won't know. People who don't know me wouldn't know. Uh, I just feed them the lines from behind the wall. Um, no, what, is your family aware of your work though? Because um, you started out as a graphic designer mm -hmm. in Shanghai and then um, how do they feel about you being a photographer? Um, um, I mean, I, I was a graphic designer after graduation um, in Shanghai, mm -hmm. and then I, I kind of get bored and want to just try something else, so I decided to just apply for school, and then I could apply both graphic design and photography, and I got into photography. And I think my parents were pretty open about it, and they think, oh, photography is like a skill, you can be a photographer, you know, you can make money maybe. <laughs> so they, they just let me go. Yeah, I think I'm lucky. I mean, my parents are pretty open in comparison of general um, Chinese parents, even though they have their doubts about my work. I mean, my parents know about my work, mm -hmm. but um, not all my relatives know. Very few, very few know about um, but is I think in China is a very different society and people kind of view everybody with the same standard. Like if you fall out of it, and then it would be considered abnormal. So I think in order to protect me, my parents usually don't tell mm -hmm. like other people what I actually do. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, what about you? No, they, like, my mom just got um, a smartphone uh, last year, and she racked up like a, a, a $1,000 phone bill, just like, um, I don't know how, like, they're really new, um, they, only I think my sister really knows my work, and she's really open about everything, but everyone in my family is kind of like, oh, he's just that photographer, uh, he's fine, he's doing fine, he's like teaching or something, it's like, they really talk me up or like bring up my Yale degree, and because they were like, oh yeah, oh, yeah. that's like it's yeah, it was like, because they didn't talk to me for four years when I was an undergrad, and they were like, oh, artists? Art oh. <laughs> they were like really, really like conservative about like, why couldn't you be a doctor? Why couldn't you be a lawyer? You could go back to school and be a photographer. <laughs> and I was like, I, I don't like being told what to do, so I was like, feign like, no, do the you, should, you should show them the project you did back then. So, like you have a project, you dress up as different yeah. like jobs and yeah, like what your family <laughs> expects you to do: doctor or lawyer. Yeah, show them the photographs. Oh, there man. it is, me. I, yeah, I still cringe over that those pictures because we're so <laughs> we we're so dumb and like new and it's like I don't know what I was doing then. I was just dressing was up and like. Time running around um, New York is like, yeah, and this. No, I'm an office worker. Uh, this is exactly what an office worker does. <laughs> like, I had no idea um, about that. But yeah, there's like no one in my family knows, and I really hope they don't Google my name right now. Because <laughs> um, there's like a sense of like, um, you know, a lot of privacy, like what you we were mentioning earlier, and
like we kind of just tend to not talk about stuff or mm -hmm. issues. It's like my mom doesn't know I'm, I'm, I'm gay, um, for one thing. Um, and so my aunt knows. <laughs> they're all like, how does this work? It's like, don't talk about it. I, I feel like when I see your portrait with your mom, like mm -hmm. the one like this one with a cutout or with yourself, like real self with your mom, mm -hmm. I kind of feel as some kind of scene where you come out with your mom. Mm -hmm. oh. Do you, do you think that's possible? Or no, I mean, those photos do you think has something to do with that kind of tension? Yeah, I think um, part of the reason why I started pick, taking pictures of her is because I, um, my sister ac accidentally outed me in school um, to my aunt and it was like, um, like me gripping my chair because I was like, I'm far away, I can't control the narrative. Um, and like, who else did she tell? Um, and I think it was like, in, I started making those pictures just in case like my mom ends up hating me in some sense. So I was like really making these like in case like, cause we didn't ever have pictures together than like graduation and like mm -hmm. really rare occasions. Like there's like a, a really big period where we don't, we don't, aren't in family pictures together. Um, mm -hmm. So it was like my weird like thing to do this uh, setup for her. And I think she kind of understands like getting a picture made together for that reason. This kind of parents relationship, it's more about um, trying to, I guess photograph is a good way to let them to get to know you. Yeah, it's like almost like this weird language that they understand, like understand about the mm -hmm. picture, why it's so important. Like they see it every day and now, mm -hmm. like my grandma gets to get pictures of her great grands or yeah, great grandson, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> Uh, for my sister, no, not mine, uh, not my child. Uh, I don't know, there's like something really um, about uh, that, that kind of photograph that is so treated um, as this universal language. Um, I guess like the last segue would be like, um, I made these like um, photo sculptures, but you've been also making these uh, men as bags. Um, sculptural work, the temple for her, uh, what was it, a collection of penises. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. um, and also you do like uh, a band with more of what we call Pimo, and um, made a book even, I think you have it with you, the Dic Pimo Dictionary. A dictionary? Yeah. About a relationship vocabulary. Which I love. How many, how many of those have you made? Oh, there. I think 500 copies on there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, it's so weird, like, we're just so parallel with our trajectory, like, because um, I think you were in Woodstock around the same time, um, or, like, coming up and using uh, the facility, like, the bookmaking facility. Yeah, yeah, I made the book there. How do, you, how do you feel, like, this plays into, like, these extensions of, like, not photographs, but they have, like, this photographic quality, like, being in a band and then uh, collaborating with your partner and making these sculptural um, pieces for you, like, how does that inform your practice now? I think my other work not necessarily um, connected, it can be, has nothing to do with photographs, mm -hmm. but I think for me, I, I see my work more as, like, biographic, so a lot of work is about how I feel, what I'm thinking, and, you know, sometimes I feel like cannot be made through a photograph, it has to be in language, then I made a, a, a dictionary or um, it has to be some object, like I have a fascination with object, then I make sculpture. Mm -hmm. um, so those for me, they are more separate from my photo work, they're kind of parallel. But they're separate. Yeah. But what about you? I think you you kind of use your cutouts and sculpture a lot in your photographs. Yeah. But like this piece, this is like a sculpture. Yeah. It's not gonna be as a something in the photographs where it could be. Yeah, it's weird. I don't think I can see that as a as a as a prop in my in my photographs. It, it it's weird. It occupies both prop and like. Um, this object for me. Um, it's either like you know, it's something I can use in my photographs. Like I paid for it, so uh, um, 
That's something really strange of having, um, for me, it's very similar, but it has to have some kind of photographic quality to them for me to make these objects at all. Like the puzzles and the 3D printed mask, and this is all, even though this is like molded for my body, there is like reference pictures to, for, to make my eyes and my ears and the, the hair, because they're the most fragile. That's also fragile, it's called I'm fragile. Um, or male fragility, I forget what I call no, it. I'm fragile. Male fragility. Yeah, male fragility. <laughs> Why not? Um, but yeah, they ask, there's like a lot of like interesting things about like this is like our first time talking to each other, really critical about each other's work, so I really am thankful for that. Um, should we segue to audience questions? Yes, I yeah. think we finished our questions. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening. Thank you, guys. Talking to each other. Stop. Thank you. Um, yeah. Hi. Hey. Uh, I'm interested in what is next for both of you guys. What are you working on? What are you excited about? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's next. I mean, I, I, you know, people ask, like, what's your next project? Because my work is so like cohesive or like I'm always doing the same project always um, it's my relationship um, and it's very hard for me to describe I guess you just see what life brings yeah what about you the same I, I, I have some ideas of what's next uh, I've some shows in mind but I always like have want to make me work and like oh this is old already it's not no one has seen it and I'm just like oh god no Gotta make something new. Um, yeah, it's like more car cardboard cutouts, more um, kissing pictures for sure. What? I'm... Um, yeah. um, great show, by the way. Thank you. And, um, does your mother care about seeing the final photograph, or does she care more just about the process of working? I think the process of working for me, she's never actually asked me to see the pictures. Like, she's kind of like, okay, I'm going to go take a nap before I go to work. Um, but I usually, like, send her a trader, like, if she's, like, smiling or there's, like, a family outing, like, I just send her the pictures and she's, like, content. And I think she's, like, very not interested in seeing um, what I've made. Which she's never been to your own show. No, no. Neither my, my aunt and cousin are the only ones who've come to my show, and that was in 2010, so. Um, that's I'm fine with, because that's, uh, it's really stressful to see people and talk to them, because at most times I just want to hide or drink. <laughs> <laughs> Can you guys talk, I mean, what I find so interesting in both of you, well, I love both of your, the way you guys work and the, the work you guys make, but um, I just think it's really interesting how you treat humor in your work and I think it's a very, you know, people can get a lot of pushback when they make work that can also be seen as humorous. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, this is not serious work, this is, but I think your work, both of you, is very serious actually and you're using humor in a really interesting way. Um, could you talk a little bit about that experience, maybe just whether or not you've had pushback, um, criticism about making work that is both that is seen as humorous or not, or what it is that draws you to why you need, you know, why you feel like you need that aspect in some ways in your work. Um. Okay, I have first. Um, I think humor um, it comes from my personalities, and I think for Tommy, I think it, when you see his work, the humor in his work is very close to his personality as well. I mean, we both use humor, but I think it's a different type of humors because we're kind of different. Um, people always say humor, if it's a humorous work, make people laugh, then it's not serious. But I kind of don't agree with that because I always find myself like, usually when I, I, I don't respond to a lot of things, but when I do respond to certain things, certain things that make me smile or like secret laugh, you know, then I feel like, oh, that is that is something that actually hit me. Mm -hmm. Like it, it reveals more my true self when mm -hmm. I actually humored. So I think that's why I always like to include humor in my own work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with that. There's something weird about like if you laugh, there's like you understand the joke in some sense. Um, I think the 
it is part of my personality, like using humor as a way to like confirm a lot of things about the world and like understand it differently. It's like a serious picture is a serious picture, but to make something funny that may, other people can relate to. It reminds me of this uh, uh, quote I saw in Miami, and it was. Uh, something that really like also struck me like I love all these quotes like yes this is explains so much about my weird chaos that is my mind uh, <laughs> that uh, Greek playwrights believe that tragedy and humor are the basis of human experiences and that's like why we're so drawn to like these like dramas and like comedy of things in life is because it's like so like everyone knows what that feels and has that and across all cultures. Mm -hmm. Um, so out of all the mediums that you've used to replicate your face, um, have any of them like particularly impactful on you in like an unexpected way? Like has it been jarring to see your face in a certain medium? Yeah, it's it's very jarring when I just open the package and it's like my face staring back at me. <laughs> um, it's like my own private performance of like um, I think the three D printed mask is something that is something very I'm fond of and it's super hard to get the get it fabricated it's even more now with the company I've been using um, just shutter and there's something really amazing when people like hold it and it's like they really tell it they know how to hold it in a certain way and they all there's weird, weird repetition and gestures that kind of happen like people hold it always hold it at the bottom at first because they never do it at the side or two two handed they just like look at it and just like in awe with this weird object that I really uh, liked about it. that's kind of absent with the flatness of the cardboard cutouts and the paper mass. Um, yeah, there's, I think that's been like my favorite of that and just trying to figure out the new material for the, the next thing and uh, yeah, I just want to keep replicating myself and just like <laughs> figure this all out, uh, how to store this and where it will go. Okay, how to store it. <laughs> um, that one definitely has to be in a box. Thank you guys so much.